Hello everybody, this is Evan Rogers coming at you with Evan's Easy Japanese. Learn Japanese online for free at www.evanseasyjapanese.com. Today's lesson is odd words. The word des. This is a little bit weird for some English speakers and when I'm teaching Japanese to Americans, especially the English speaking Americans, they get a few mistakes in their usage of it. Another way to say that with using English properly is that they use it incorrectly very frequently. Des. Des often causes some problems with English speakers. It means, just so you're aware, it means is. It means are, it means be, or any of the different be verbs. Is, are, were, was, uh, am. Uh, all those words that mean basically the same thing. It signifies that X equals Y. It is called the copula, if you know what I mean. That's weird. Um, anyway, the copula, because it copulates things. <laughs> Copulation. Hey, the copula. Woo. It's because it combines, it, it, it turns two things together. <laughs> it joins two things at the hip, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, basically, X equals Y, the copula. The copula generally just tells us, in any language, we refer to the copula as that which makes the subject of the sentence in the state of the predicate. For those of you who don't know what the subject and the predicate of a verb of a sentence is, here's a little bit of a refresher and all of these use all of these sentences would if translated in Japanese use des in some way. So the subject, the dog is big. Though the first sentence, the dog is big. The subject is the dog. The subject of a sentence is what does the thing or what is the thing. The dog is big, so thus the dog is the subject. The predicate is all the other information that isn't the subject. In this situation, it's the dog is the subject and thus everything else is is big. The dog is big. So the dog exists in a state of being big. Thus, the predicate is conjoined directly to the subject. The subject directly exists as the predicate. The dog is big. The next one, the Japanese teacher is bald, which is very true. I am bald. Uh, the Japanese teacher is the subject. Who is bald? The Japanese teacher. What is the Japanese teacher? He is bald. The Japanese teacher, subject, is bald, predicate. Those two things are directly joined together via saying that x equals y the japanese teacher equals bald the dog equals big that i shouldn't say equals but b y you can kind of see how they're not exactly the equal like you wouldn't say the big is dog and you wouldn't say bald is the japanese teacher uh, because those aren't necessarily true but you can kind of see what i'm saying the dog exists as big the japanese teacher exists as bald they the japanese teacher is bald the dog is big and the third sentence, the man that I saw in the hat yesterday is known as Dale Patello, who was a friend of mine. He's been asking for a shout out and he's finally getting it. Are you happy, Dale? Are you happy? Notice how big the subject is. The man that I saw in the hat yesterday. All of those words are modifying the man. The man is, the, technically the, the subject is man. However, all of that information is complementing the word man. Thus, all that is the complete subject. The man that I saw in the hat yesterday, what is he doing? He is also known as Dale Patello. That's the predicate, is also known as Dale Patello. That's how our subject and our predicates work. Thus, he is Dale Patello. The man is Dale Patello. If you look at the sentence, that's all it says. The man is Dale Patello. That is the sentence. The subject is the, subject is the man that I saw in the hat yesterday. He exists as... Dale Patello. Thus, the subject and the predicate are essentially the same, or we're, we're linking them and calling them the same for right now. We're saying that the predicate, the subject exists as the predicate. And in our fourth sentence, we see an intriguing sentence where the subject is really tiny and the predicate is gigantic. And we could do it either way. I mean, we could make a gigantic subject and a small predicate. But anyway, the subject of this one is just you. And then the predicate is are an incredibly inconsiderate man that no one could ever like, even if they had an eternity of counseling with the creator himself. Or if you're all into that feminist stuff herself, whatever. You is what is all of that stuff. That's the subject. 
what is the subject? The subject is the subject cop uh, is copulated with. Oh yeah, about Anyway, sorry. You, what is you? You is are an incredibly inconsiderate man that no one would ever talk to. Even all that stuff that I just don't want to pronounce that much. That's when you're saying the subject is the predicate. The subject exists as a predicate. This is what the copula is. In any language, it does essentially the same thing. Because it takes the thing on the left and it hooks it to the thing on the right. Ching! They are copulated. Why is there so much confusion with the des? Um, to be totally honest, there isn't a crap ton of confusion. That's a scientific measurement, by the way. Uh, the scientific unit of one crap ton. Um, it's, it's, it's very intriguing that uh, Isaac Newton back in the 20th century, which obviously is false, he, he was using this measurement to measure uh, how much light was used. Anyway, I'm just rambling on as a joke. Why the confusion? The confusion actually comes from English's sentence structure. Um, it's very interesting. In English, we use we use verbs in different tenses the same way that we use adjectives. Um, for example, I am running. Uh, the actual verb is run, and you exist in a state of running, and thus English speakers are actually saying that I am running. In fact, uh, different verb tenses can combine to be adjectives in English. For example, the running man. Or um, the man who ran. Uh, the the uh, the in, uh, I was interested. The interesting thing. Interest is actually a verb, but we can turn it into interesting, and then that becomes an adjective. We do this crazy thing in English. English does weird things with verbs, and thus there's confusion. Des is only saying X is Y. Most textbooks. Another reason why it's confusion confusing for the English speakers that most textbooks start off with X, Y, Y, DES. Whoop, my mouse appears. X is the subject, while Y is the thing that it is. DES is the word IS. And it translates it as X is Y. If you just line these up perfectly, look at what they think. Look, if you just don't spend any time studying this outside of just a quick glance, you immediately think that X is X, Y is Y, and then Y is is. And you might think that Y is is, and you don't know what the heck Des is doing, and you're kind of like, duh, Des doesn't mean anything, so I can just throw it whenever I want to. <laughs> Which actually happens all the time. When I'm teaching Japanese, unfortunately my students make this mistake, and I've seen other teachers' students make this mistake. It's just this Des becomes meaningless to them. Now, uh, in case you're paying attention, in case you're, you're a little bit confused here, X is the subject, and we know it's the subject because of wa. That's what this wa does. The wa tells us what the subject or the topic or the thing that we're talking about is. Wa isn't translated into English. We don't translate wa except beyond where we put the words. Why is why, and then des is actually this is. Japanese is a sub. Uh, sorry, Japanese is a subject object slash complement verb. We call it an S O V or an S C V language. In, Jap in English, is an SVO, so you see subject, verb, object, or complement. Whereas Japanese is an SOV, that's a V, not a B, because I'm not being a jerk. SOV. Notice the verb is on the right side, whereas in English, the verb is in the middle. This causes a lot of confusion to people who aren't used to thinking that, hey, I could actually put words in weird ways. You know, uh, you know if you're not thinking, hey, I wonder how I could make a language look really weird. Hmm, maybe if I put the verb in the middle of the sentence, I could make it seem really weird. But that's actually what we do in English. So if we put the verb at the very end of the sentence, it would look really weird. And that's what Japanese does to us. So the English brain just translates wa as is. <coughs> Excuse me. The English brain just translates wa as is on accident. And it just kind of ignores des. This leads to students who speak Japanese and gradually just say blah 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 and then they think they're done with the sentence and they just sort of sit there like the des oh uh, koyo tabiru des it's kind of you'll see this very frequently in japanese 101 students uh just cuz they haven't their brain accidentally translates wa as is Des is a knob verb. Uh, it's one of the very very few verbs that breaks the mas form rules. Notice how des doesn't have mas. Um, it conjugates oddly. It doesn't conjugate quite the same way as other things. 
it is a shortened version of de adimas. Um, so de adimas and des are essentially the same thing. However, des is less formal. Des and de adimas are both polite. De adimas is more formal, thus you'll see it in writing. Des is more common in speaking. And it's just it's it's a very strange verb that it's kind of odd because it, it does the same thing as de adimas and yet it 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 exists side by side with it. Another strange thing about des is that the na of na adjectives operates just like and actually is a form of des. The um when you when you're dealing with kire na hito, you're actually saying a kire des hito. It's a very odd thing. The na of the na adjectives, sometimes they're called na nominals, uh, na nouns, are uh, is actually the des verb. Um, it's very intriguing to see this happen. Thus, yes, des is very strange. Just to reiterate, des is de arimas shortened. Both are polite, but de arimas is formal. It is a verb. Des is a verb. Thus, it's, it comes at the end of sentences generally. It is the equal sign it's of subject equals predicate. Wa is not is. Des is is. Wa is not is. Des is is. Conjugations of des, just so you're aware of them. I already have a video. We'll link it here. You'll see a uh, YouTube annotation. The non-past of des is des. The past tense of des is deshta. The negative is ja arimasen or dewa arimasen. It reverts back to its de arimas format. The negative past tense is ja arimasen deshta or dewa arimasen deshta. Dewa being more formal than ja. Te is de. The t sorry, the te form is de. Or in odd situations that are hardly ever used, it's deshte. Um, very, very, very infrequent. Very, very, very formal. Here's what des isn't. Here, are, Here's a few things that you might not think you'll screw up, but you might eventually make these mistakes. Okay, so here's just a few big old warning signs. Des is not is, am, or are, as in there is a car outside. You're not actually saying that the word there is a car outside. Oh my god, there! That location is a car outside! You're not actually saying that there is a car outside. You're saying that there happens to be a car outside over there. In that location, there is a car. A car does exist over there. Or, there are people in my head. <laughs> For example, the people that might be in your head if you're crazy, they aren't there. Like, we can't say there equals the people in my head. We're saying that people in my head live in my head. There in my head live people. That's what we're saying. We're saying that people exist in my head. Do you see that there's a subtle difference between the two? A car is outside means... Sorry, let me, let me say this a little bit differently. A car is outside means if you look outside, you will see a car. But if we say there is a car outside would mean when we look at whatever there is, if we look at there, it is a car outside. Like, there equals a car outside. That's not what we're saying. These usages of the word is in English and are in English are the uses of artimas and imas most of the time. I'm sure there's a few uh, weirdos. Des says that x equals y. Arimas slash imas says that X exists. Something is at a location. Something be something lives at a location. Something is at a location. Something exists at a location. That's what those two verbs do. Next bullet point. Des is not is am are as in I am running fast or I will be watching TV. Notice how I am running fast. The word am is there. Or I will be watching TV. Notice how the word be there. Um, those aren't the deses. Those are actually, in Japanese, we communicate that idea with te imas. The same way that in English we have to use the be verb, am, is, are, whatever, plus the verb in the ing format, I am running, I will be watching. In Japanese, we use the te form of the verb followed by imas. Des says x equals y. Te imas says is continually dirt is continuously doing sorry this is difficult to say because i'm not thinking that well is continuously doing currently slash at that time at the time in question the the verb is being continuously done i will make a video on this in the future 
bear with me. Here's a few goods and bads. Des is not arimasu, that's imas. I am outside. Watashi wa soto des. This would be a bad yo mama joke. <laughs> you know, I am outside. That's kind of like Jesus saying, I am the way. Uh, there's that joke online. Jesus, get out of the way. And he says, screw you. I am the way. Um... We're not saying that you equals outside. We're saying that you live outside. You are, you know, standing outside. The more correct use would be watashi wa soto ni imas. Soto ni imas. Notice the ni particle tells us where soto ni imas is existing at that location. Watashi means me. Soto means outside. Des would be is, which is the wrong thing we want to say. And imas means living slash existing slash being there. Watashi wa soto ni imasu is a more accurate translation. Des is not te imasu. I am playing Skyrim. Watashi wa Skyrim o suru desu. Boo boo. Suru is to do, and we don't add des after a suru. We have to do some other things to the verb to pull off anything similar to that. Um, so, watashi wa I. Skyrim is the object that we're playing. Sky, su, skyrim o is, tells us what we're doing. Suru is the verb, which is watashi wa Skyrim wa suru would be I play Skyrim. But if we want to say I am playing Skyrim, we do not add des. What we do instead is use the te form of suru, shite imasu, and then add imasu on the bottom end. So watashi wa Skyrim o shite imasu. Hopefully you see the difference, and hopefully you understand the difference. Des is des. I am a monkey. Watashi wa saru desu. Oh, yeah, well, th sorry, there's no spaces in that sentence. Give me a break. Watashi wa saru desu. Watashi wa, I am the subject. Saru, monkey, desu. Am. I am a monkey. I am fat. Watashi wa dibu desu. I am a fatty. That's the lesson! That dude's taken from your mama. It's a pretty funny channel on YouTube. Check it out. There you go. There is the odd word des. Many young students of Japanese make these mistakes. Many young students of Japanese will be confused about this. And I am trying to nip it in the bud. Yeah, yeah. Nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud. Copulation. <laughs> I'm stupid. Please ignore me. I will see you in the next video. Have yourself a great day. Learn yourself some Japanese. Keep checking out www.evanzizijapanese.com. Show me the, some love. Give me a donation. If you enjoyed this video, give me the like button. Share it with your friends. Tell everyone you know. Stand on your rooftop and scream to the masses. We must learn Japanese at evanzizijapanese.com. Or, you know, just enjoy the video. Have yourself a great day. Bye.